So welcome, I'm Joanne Vaughn. Um, I'm the Executive Director of Maryland Federation of Art. I just wanna let you know that this is an absolutely beautiful show. Um, we've already sold one painting. Um, it's wonderful to see all the work up on the walls. Um, and, and it's great to have artwork back in the gallery again. So I very much appreciate you guys um, hanging with us, creating such gorgeous work, working with us to bring the, this work to the public. It's nice to see your face, Joanne. <laughs> well, thanks. It's nice to see everybody. It really, um, it was one of the things that was, was really hard is where while we exist as a gallery, we also exist as a membership organization. We exist as an organization to, su to support artists. And uh, we're very used to dealing with the artists that exhibit with us. On, and if you exhibit, you know, more than once or twice on a fairly regular basis, even if you're not from around here. So, uh, so no, I think that that's, that's been one of the more difficult things. Um, the other thing is, is trying to figure out how we bring the program to people. Um, so this reception will be recorded and we'll get it up on, on our YouTube channel. Um, I don't know if you've been on the YouTube channel lately, but we have, uh, a series of talks with a local, um, a local art historian. He's a former senior staffer at the National Gallery named Will Scott, who's doing Will Talks with Artists. There's one coming up on Tuesday. Um, you can find that link on the website. But we've done, I think, 14 or 15 of those. Um, we did a virtual studio tour for uh, local artists last spring. So we've been trying to put out as much content online as we can. One of the things we will be looking at soon is the subjects, the themes for our online only exhibitions. Um, the one that will open soon is street scenes. It's one we've done several years in a row, but we'll be looking for other ideas. So if you have, if anybody has an idea, please let us know. You can shoot us an email or put it in the chat here. David, I know that you're on. Do you want to say anything about the exhibition? Because you and Sharon hung it. Joanne, did you say something? Yes. Oh, did you want yes. to say anything about the show? Because you and Sharon were the ones that hung it. Oh, well, I will say this. The show, we both talked about this while we were setting it up and installing it. Incredible variety and a really kind of spectacular show. Uh, the work, uh, it was diverse and really, really nice, really nice pieces. So yeah, I was I was happy to be kind of the recipient of being able to install this. Sharon, do you have anything to add? You'll need to unmute. There we go. Well, I agree with David. This is great work and uh, it was a real pleasure to put it all together. So have we had good uh, attendance? Uh, people stopping in, Joanne. Yeah, no, we've had a lot of people and we like I said we've had one sale. Um, and, you know, great reception to the show. I had somebody who came in um, Friday, no, yesterday, oh. Saturday, that was talking about it's somebody who's not used to going to a lot of galleries and certainly a lot of galleries that aren't commercial galleries. Mm -hmm. And it was just very um, sort of overwhelmed, not overwhelmed not, is a bit too strong a word, but, <laughs> but certainly, well, you know, taken by the variety of the work. This is, you know, just some, somebody off the street who thinks of a painting in one way. And I think that's what's so nice about what we do as an organization is you expand the idea of how the public views art, and what they consider art. And, you know, and we talked about some pieces, you said, well, that's a little modern for me. But, um, but realizing that, that it's not, painted work is not all just traditional still lifes or a traditional landscape, but we have those in the show. Um, but that there's so much more to the concept of what an artist is trying to say and present to the to the community. 
I think that's what, Joanne, I think that's what's become even more prevalent at the gallery, and that is the, the diversity of media, style, technique, application. It's mm -hmm. just kind of overwhelming when you see this whole uh, body of work from all over. Well, and I could say we usually get, and I don't know this time how many, but at least 30, 20, 30 some states participating in a national show. Is that what yeah, you Yeah, we say? typically have a little over 30s um, hmm. uh, from people who, who entered, not necessarily exhibitors. Well, I mean, I, I think, what was there, 500 and some odd works, 530 works, and um, I, I, think, I, I, I think I went through them a number of times and, uh, you know, tried to pick the things that I Get, I guess felt uh, the most strongly about. And um, there, I think as I wrote, there was a, 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 a big um, range in, mm -hmm. in, in the types of work. Uh, and uh, so it wasn't, um, it wasn't that hard once I kind of went through it, I think a couple of times, because I think you, you go through it and you see something and then you say, well, I think I better look a little farther, but, um, it, it seemed to be a very, um, a very rich show. I mean, it, uh, uh, it, it wasn't a, a group of people where everybody was, I'm not saying doing the same thing, you know, but there are representational painters, uh, but some of them more on a kind of observational bent and other ones uh, with, a, with maybe a more of a narrative uh, bent to them. And then there was um, uh, landscape, portrait, still life. And uh, the same thing was, uh, was true with the abstract work. Uh, sometimes it had uh, uh, figurative elements in it. And sometimes it was just purely uh, abstract. Uh, and I just tried to pick things that, um, uh, you know, uh, I felt, uh, um, I guess moved me. There was a sense in him that there was something uh, particular about the the person who was uh, or the piece, uh, and, and I, uh, I I kind of went about it that way. Video is that the one? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I I can hear him now. Am I? Okay, if you can go ahead, Mark. If you can mute yourself, if you're not. Yeah, and I think what I did was I just um, uh, tried to pick uh, works that I, that I felt um, uh, strongly about. I mean, I think it has a little bit to do with my own experience uh, uh, teaching at, at uh, uh, the Maryland Institute. I mean, you, you see a lot of different things and uh, you, uh, I think, uh, realize that people think very differently about things and that's... Uh, how I approached it, uh, that, that kind of sense that, uh, but I, it seemed to be a lot of serious work, a lot of people who seemed uh, very committed. And I think the thing that was um, hard was, is that uh, when you have over 500 pieces and you pick 60, uh, I mean, that's like a fifth of all the work that was up there. And I think uh, it was hard to say for instance, why a certain piece I may, may have liked, but then I chose another piece, like whether or not there was a, you know, a, a real big kind of difference in them. So that was kind of hard to do. And, and as I said in my, in my statement, um, I think whenever you do something like this, the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to discourage people. You, know, you don't want to uh, get people to sort of think, well, I didn't get into this, so I don't know. I guess maybe I'm I'm not, and, and I, um, you know, I I just feel like you. Uh, I, I saw a lot of uh, serious people, and I would hope that they, um, you know, aren't discouraged by it. I mean, I'm one one juror, and I may have a certain uh, perspective, but other jurors might have a very different uh, uh, perspective, um, uh, and that I think was. Uh, well, I tried to do. I, you know, I have my um, my my biases in terms of my, what my own work uh, is about. Uh, but I guess you try 
uh, to uh, kind of put that aside uh, for the uh, for for the time that you're uh, that you're doing that. So I don't know if anybody had any questions or but. Uh, well, I think it, I think if we have Evan pull the PowerPoint up, um, we can look at your juror statement, and then we can look at the pieces you selected for awards, okay. and then after that, we can look at any other pieces people want to talk to you about. Sure. So if we go to the next slide, Evan, I think here's here's uh, the juror statement. Um, in during strokes of genius show, I found a real breath in the show. The work. Sorry, I've got you ranged from purely abstract to very realized representation. Not only there was there breadth in terms of the kinds of art, but also the kinds of materials that was used to make it. In the obvious sense, some paintings were, were oil or acrylic, but the others had many different materials that were incorporated into their pieces. The size and the work varied greatly from very large pieces to very small pieces. The breadth was so clear from the start of looking at the paintings, I found it difficult to pick just 60 for the show. I felt that there were many more that could have been represented had there been more space to exhibit the work. I think it will be a strong show and it really is. And people who view it will find a richness in the concerns of the artists. In choosing the prizes, I found it particularly difficult because so many pieces deserved a prize and so decided to break it into five awards. The work that I viewed reflected a real seriousness and commitment. I would hope that those who weren't chosen to be in the show would not be discouraged and would continue working and submitting their pieces in other venues. I wish everyone good luck with their work and their artistic pursuit. So that fits exactly with what you've told us. Um, and I think that's just a great statement. So Evan, you wanna bring the first slide up? Okay. And Mark, if you wanna yeah, talk I, to I, I know I, David's on the, on the Zoom as well. So you guys can discuss. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a, it's a beautiful painting. Uh, it, uh, uh, I, I think, the the thing about it was, uh, I think for me, uh, uh, just the light in the painting had a had a, had a just a special uh, uh, quality. I mean, it it felt like it was either uh, early or later in the, in the day, and, and there was not a whole lot of direct light in terms of sunlight being on shapes, but rather. Uh, the light seemed more uh, reflected like on, on the roof. And I, I think in many cases, paintings, this I would say is a painting that uh, you would say had very, um, uh, 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 what I would call limited palette, but many times lim limited palettes can be the most beautiful in terms of just the way the color is, is really felt between one thing and, and the next. So, so in the building, you know, just the kind of beauty of that cool light on the roof. And then, you know, just the kind of sense of the warmth here, which is not like the sky, but it gets close. And then again, the sensation of the color, like just punching through uh, to the blue of the sky. Uh, and then uh, the, um, the sense of distance, like for instance, the, the trees here, which are rather close to you, and you move to here and then back to here. So just a really very uh, simply and uh, beautifully um, um, felt piece. And um, I, I think that uh, also it's not, a, it's not a small piece. I mean, it's uh, a lot of times when I go out or friends of mine who are landscape painters, you know, they'll just take a, you know, an eight by 10 and this is, you know, it gets up toward an, an easel size, um, painting, which is, which is pretty, uh, pretty large painting. And, and this was a painting that struck me right from the beginning. And this might've been a little bit where my own, uh, my own concerns in painting came into play in the sense that, you know, I'm, I'm involved with uh, the light and, and, and the landscape at different times of day. David, do you want to say anything about the painting? Uh, no, I, thank you so much, Mark. Uh, I, I, uh, I I do I do work with light and uh, shadow a lot, but I, I slowly drifted toward gray tones with bits of color brightening mm -hmm. the gray tones. So uh, and it was it was morning, uh, early morning, which uh, accounted for the light um, in 
in Eastern Shore, and uh, and I uh, I I love working with the uh, work buildings, as it were, along the water, crab shacks, and things like that. So I think uh, something with character and that type of thing. But uh, yes, uh, I I appreciate your comments. I thought they were uh, very appreciated by me, actually. Well, I I was going to say. Uh, uh, to you that 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 it did. I mean that this is not some uh, great revelation, but I, I that's what I thought you did. I thought you did it at the the Eastern Shore because it has the you know the kind of qualities of of places down on the water or, or I guess what you know, some of the inlets and and whatnot. And yeah, it's a great place to. I mean, I mean, I know people came from all around the country, but. Uh, uh, Maryland is really a pretty extraordinary state in terms of it, uh, the breadth of its landscapes. You know, you can go down to the eastern shore, uh, you head uh, up toward uh, Lancaster or places like that, or you can go into the, uh, the mountains. So it's a pretty uh, amazing place. But yeah, I think you're caught. I, well, I think all paintings are kind of portraits. And, and I think this is uh, what, what you'd feel is a portrait of, uh, of, that, of, of the place that you uh, that painted. Okay. Uh, yes, thank, thank you so much, Mark. Thank you for uh, you know, the award and uh, your recognition of it. Oh, you're welcome. Evan, you wanna bring up the next church choice? Mark, your thoughts on this? Grace, yeah. Grace is on the call. This is um, this is one that, that I think there were two portraits that Grace did, but if I'm not right, um, but but I'm not sure of that. But um, yeah, I just like this painting because um, I, I thought it was a, 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 a. I mean, there's something about the portrait that just like I was saying about. Uh, the landscape um, uh, that there, I mean, this is obviously a portrait, but there's also something particular. I kind of like the, uh, the stove and the background and, and the kind of sense of this, this sitter being in this uh, kind of world. Not necessarily that um, you would say, oh, he's connected to it, but he's obviously sitting in this, um, uh, what, what is, is a kitchen. And, and I just thought that the, the figure was really simply um, simply stated. There was again, there was a nice sense of, of light in the painting, the kind of light on the head, uh, which was sort of coming more from uh, from the left, but also some reflective light kind of picking up uh, in in terms of um, what might have been you know happening back here. And as I said, I very much like this. I mean, this is just one of the parts, but this area, and then the same thing going over here. And oftentimes I, I teach portrait and I, I, I know it's hard when you work in a portrait because you're, 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 you're in the head and you're saying to yourself, uh, I, I gotta get this. And oftentimes what, what is important is uh, what goes on uh, around the, the, the form. So for instance, the head has a kind of, not a kind of, it has a warmth to it. And then there are places where it picks up cooler uh, kind of reflective, reflective things. And yet it works because in, in many ways, there's not a real distinction value-wise between say the light on this head and what's happening back here. But what it does is it reinforces the kind of warmth of the flesh to the kind of coolness of the stove. And I think that happened in a lot of places, sometimes in reverse of that, where there's almost a cooler quality to the flesh here. And by comparison to say up here, but then it turns more into a shadow. So I like the thinking across the form. And it also looks like somebody uh, particular, which I, Whenever I um, talk about portrait, I, I always say that, you know, that's a, that's the the main thing I think in some ways that you're um, 
that you're looking at somebody and uh, you want to do, uh, I guess, justice to that uh, to that person. I mean, we'll never know. I don't know who what Kevin looks like, but I think a painting can give off a sense of something uh, particular. In this case, it's you know you have a hat that's a very particular hat. You have a shirt that's very particular, and you have this kind of world which she's sitting in, which is very particular. And then. His uh, his face, his head is has a very particular quality. So so that was this this wasn't a hard one to uh, uh, to choose. And and at, what I also found interesting is that the the landscape before I said that uh, the size in that which was I think eighteen by twenty two, and this one is eight inches by eight inches. It's not much much. Uh, larger, if not the same size as what I'm seeing it on the screen. And that's what I found uh, in the show to be a very interesting thing that some of the pieces um, had, a, had a, a much larger scale. And then other pieces that were about uh, this size. And, and I think that's, that also reflects a, a richness in the show. And I think oftentimes we, uh, we take the position that, you know, big, Bigger is better, but you know it's just not not the case. And 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 um, I I remember when I saw this painting, I didn't exactly uh, look at it with the size in mind. And then I remember when I was going through them again, and I saw uh, the size. And again, it, right now I'm reminded of the size. But no, this is a painting that, uh, like the first one, I it struck me from uh, you know from the um, from the beginning. Grace, do you want to comment on anything? Yeah, um, thank you so much, uh, Mark, for um, going through all those works and then making these selections. I really do appreciate it. And I'm a very big fan of, of your work as well. Um, uh, so yes, with this one, um, the size is pretty important because I was kind of kicked out of my studio during the whole COVID situation. So. Um, the size and the uh, panel is directly a result of just having to work at home in my small, smaller space. Um, and then uh, him, uh, it's actually my, my little brother, but um, he's here in my parents' kitchen in like a, a domestic setting. And then he has a shirt that's kind of um, like camouflage-y. So I was trying to, uh, I guess, comment on him and how he's still there as a young adult. and um in his head but also stuck there um but I was paying attention to again the the light and the color and the warmth and the shapes um and how it just kind of pieces together and, and holds it all yeah I think it did it uh, and I, I I sort of also um uh I, I think your um your response to the COVID thing and I mean it, it might have been a much easier response to say, well, I don't have my studio. I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess I'll just stop. And uh, what what it sounds like to me is that you just kind of adjust it. You just said, well, this is my situation, and you and you made good use of it. And sometimes, I guess things like that, where you might have been forced because you're you know you're in other people's houses and. Uh, and so you have to go down to a different size, but sometimes you um, you can discover something by 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 a situation that may not be uh, t totally to your to your liking, but uh, by just sort of accepting it and say I'll go in this uh, direction. But I I would encourage you to just uh, you know it seems like you you, you like uh, the the portrait and uh, just try to get people to. Um, you know, to pose for you, which obviously uh, uh, you did here. But no, I, I think it's a wonderful painting. You should feel, uh, you should see, feel very good about it. Thank you so much, Mark. Good, uh, Evan, can we go to the next slide? Yeah, I, I thought, yeah, I, um, I thought this was um, a, um, well, it was, it was such a unique piece um, in terms of, I, I know there were like still lives in the show and I think I picked one or two of them. No, more than that. Uh, but what I thought was interesting about this piece 
the same thing I think I'm probably guilty of whenever I look at, um, whenever I look at art was the, the, the sense of light in it. It's very beautiful. Um, and like with Grace's piece and, and, and the first piece, Dias' piece, um, the, the color is very subtle, but, but again, it's that idea of like, um, so for instance, you're back here in this um, wall and then you feel it against the, the, the piece of sculpture and it has a kind of warmth that plays against the coolness. And then when you go over to the, to the shadow, the shadow almost has a kind of warmth to it by comparison to where the light might be striking. And so it's that idea about the, the beauty of color that can be found in a shadow. It's not always simply in, in the light. And I also like just the way at times the shadow within the form got very close to what was happening uh, behind it and it gave it an air. The other thing I thought was interesting about the painting was is that um, I don't know if Samantha, if maybe she could look it up when she uh, gets done today, but the, there's a wonderful English painter by the name of William Nicholson, who did these beautiful port, um, uh, still lives. Um, of oftentimes he did a, a couple of um, with um, Chinese um, pieces, ebony pieces. And um, this reminded me uh, of that. And the other thing that I felt about it too uh, was the fact that it was a painting that seemed to um, marvel uh, in, in surface, that the kind of just the pleasure of just the thing, the way things appear to us, that, that the, this almost had, and I'll ask this, but it almost had a little bit of a kind of a, a plaster, a plastic like quality or, or, or shine to it. And um, I thought that was uh, uh, interesting. And the other thing I thought was just this kind of thing that it's on. Uh, it, it just seems again, like it was so much about uh, the sense of it having a certain tactile uh, quality and then finally going down to here. So as I pointed out in a couple of the paintings, I just think that the color in it was really very, um, you know, really felt. And, 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 uh, and although the range of the color, uh, not so much the value, the range in the value is very, is probably about as far in a range as you could get. Uh, but the color is just very simply uh, stated and makes an event out of the sort of transitions from a color like this into a color like this, or the reflection on the on, on this that comes from uh, here. So I felt that uh, uh, throughout. It's not predictable necessarily either, because like for instance, there's a very beautiful shadow here that's rather warm, and then you go back into the uh, uh, to the wall and it's cool or cooler, I should say. And the thing is, is that oftentimes with light, uh, the, where the light falls on something, it can oftentimes be the warmer thing and the shadow being the cooler. But then it does have that feeling when it plays against uh, this uh, to this, like this feels a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, cooler. And I, I really like the, the choice of the color here and then just the way you get back into here and then finally into the shadow that it, uh, that it throws. And, and it actually surprises me that when I was talking before about Grace's painting and I said it was, um, I was surprised when I, I, I think I looked at it the second time that it was nine by uh, eight by eight, I'm sorry. And yet this one is 15 by 15, which is not small considering that the object itself uh, almost seems to have a, like a, a quality that's not a real large uh, piece. It seems like it's sitting on a, um, you know, on some kind of table-like um, uh, surface. So that, that's not a small piece considering it's just one, uh, uh, just one, well, two objects and then the, the, the table and the wall. But, um, you know, that, I thought that was interesting that it was that. But yeah, I thought this was a, Again, a really um, a terrific piece, and it just uh, 
it just felt very alive to me in a, in a very quiet kind of subtle um, subtle way. Okay, I don't think Samantha is on the call. Okay. If so, she's under somebody else's name. So, okay, Evan, you want to go to the next piece? Yeah, and this was one that I I I, I liked uh, a lot too, and I made the point that in some of the paintings. You know, there was the obvious thing between like an acrylic or an oil painting, but but this one, you know, has uh, different materials um, uh, in it, and, um, and and I and I think again the the thing that that moved me about this piece was was the kind of sense of the uh, of the color in it. It, it, it in a, in a way it had a little bit more like in the um, the first landscape I was talking about uh, David Diaz's painting I was talking about the subtlety of the warms to the cool and in this one it's almost as if those those transitions from the warm to the cool uh, are really seen in a in a beautiful way and but they're a little bit more in terms of um, uh, the sensation is a little bit more powerful in, in the sense of wanting to sort of make them felt. But I also liked in this painting that it, it held together as a painting. A lot of times what happens in a painting, you can introduce a color that just sort of, it just becomes wrong for the painting. It's, it's sort of out of the realm of like the, the sense of things happening in the painting. And I thought in this painting, there were some pretty strong uh, colors. And, and the thing is, is that it seemed to really hold well. Like I, I, I remember sort of thinking that this had a kind of strength to it that probably was stronger than other parts of that, of, of that kind of range of color. So you would go up here and it got a little bit sort of darker. And then here it almost feels like it was there and it was kind of taken down. So there was this interesting sense of within those kind of uh, warm earthy colors, a, a certain kind of range that played up against the, the, the cooler class. And in that sense, I, I felt that the, um, that the landscape um, had a, um, I think, not landscape, the abstract painting here had a, a real sense of, um, of being, um, uh, of being very much about the kind of sensation and the kind of textures uh, that you can feel in a landscape without necessarily uh, depicting a landscape, without saying, oh, here's, you know, the, um, uh, the uh, horizon, or here's uh, this. And, and, and that I felt was, I think many times for me that that's what, when, when, when paintings that are not uh, in an obvious sense representing something, I think they tend to, to allude to something. And that's what I felt about in this painting. There was a, uh, you know, this kind of sense that, uh, that, that things were really felt and, and and, and the kind of uh, decisions between uh, like the cool colors, like for instance here, you know, versus say here are very similar to what I talked about in terms of the more earthy uh, colors. So I thought it worked well. I think it also is an interesting painting in the sense that uh, it's sort of a painting where you feel as if there is a past to the painting. In other words, there are things that are underneath under things or certain things come forward because they might have been there in a different kind of way. Something you see uh, many times in Richard Diebenkorn's uh, uh, paintings, whether or not his early paintings or his Ocean Park paintings or his, um, his representational paintings. It's like this under over thing of just constantly sort of putting something down that obscures something else, maybe scraping it back out in those remnants of pieces uh, from before. 
uh, come uh, through. And the other thing I would say too, is there's something really about the surface that is uh, very interesting because on the one hand, you have what, what feels like a rather uh, flat surface in terms of it doesn't have a lot of uh, like paint. And then all of a sudden you'll have a piece where it looks like the, like the pigment is sort of coming off uh, the surface like in here. And, and I think that's uh, something that struck me uh, in the um, uh, in the painting, but I think many one times I remember someone talking about um, uh, Matisse's uh, uh, painting, um, and they were saying that when you really look at them, particularly I think when you get to the more mature paintings, the the color is really limited in the painting, and and what it is is that the color uh, between like things is very felt. It's not like there a lot of colors. Uh, competing with it. And earlier, when I was talking about um, how oftentimes uh, paintings can allude to something, but I mean, a person that would come to mind is, is a person like Joan Mitchell. Uh, uh, I think her dates are probably uh, like 19, 10, 15, maybe a little later, right up into the late uh, 1900s, and she uh, really her her landscapes were kind of reminiscent of um, her, her her paintings were reminiscent of landscape, and sometimes they actually took on the quality of landscape. But that's that's what I sort of felt like uh, uh, like I felt in this um, in, in this painting. Okay, I don't think Donna's again. I don't think she's on the Zoom. Okay. Um, so, Evan, you want to go to the next next slide? And, and, and the one thing uh, about this uh, piece was is that, um, I mean, in some ways it doesn't have anything like what, it's not about what I just talked about. But I, I think there's just something about the reality of the touch in this, um, in this painting that, that I felt, um, yeah, I just felt it really was sensitive in, in terms of um, uh, just the, the hand in it, like, like it was not trying to like, uh, um, like assert something, but rather sort of, there was a sort of sense of, of maybe putting something down and sort of looking at it and, and letting it stay and maybe then going back and sort of, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, giving it a life and, and then seeing how it sort of moves in the um, painting. And in many ways, I think it, it also was a painting where I felt like the, um, uh, the color and it was just really sensitive. I mean, it, there were sort of pieces like, uh, you know, just move, just taking this area like right in here and just how rich it was like sometimes things are really obviously cool, other times things kind of more uh, in the middle. And I also like the the um, the kind of lines at times. Like sometimes they were obvious in the sense that they probably maybe weren't as adjusted or changed, but then sometimes they just looked like there was washes or whatnot uh, over them. And I, and I thought um, I thought that that again, was that feeling of touch, uh, that, that sort of sensitivity to the mark. And, um, and I think that was, that, that's uh, uh, reinforced with the uh, color. I think also just the way you move across here to here. And again, I think that is, I mean, I, I said in an obvious sense in the last one, maybe it's because the, the sort of sense of horizon or, or whatever it was in the last one, but in some ways, this one too is a certain feeling that the colors, uh, uh, for me, come out of nature. That, that they're not that like nature. It's it's very subtle and it's very um, oftentimes it, it's not real bright or, or whatnot. The first uh, David Diaz's painting uh, where I, we were talking about that, and and I think in some ways this this painting has a a similar kind of um, uh, sensitivity uh, to the color. And also like that it, this, this, this sort of dark 
moment here in a in a in a painting where the world is 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 more in in the middle uh, to the uh, the lighter range of um, uh, of values and, and and I suspect it has to do with something because these these forms are clearly have a geometry and a and a and a, a volume uh, to them. But I I thought this was just a a, a really sensitive and um, uh, just felt uh, uh, painting, and and I think that when I saw it, I just kind of marveled in the, in that in that quality. Uh, maybe I'm focusing more on that. I think there are other qualities, but I think it's all related uh, to the touch of the painting, uh, the color in the painting, the the kind of sense of the line and how varied. Uh, it, it it can be, and, and just the sense that everything seems very much um, uh, considered, not thought out, but considered. In other words, put things down in the painting, step back, like, what does it feel like? I mean, should I adjust this or should I change that? And, and I, I've, I feel that that's um, like um, a, an important part of this um, of this painting, but yeah, I, you know, I, this and the other abstract painting. Jeff, yes, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Yeah, like Jeffrey is <laughs> on the call. Uh, okay, Th thank you. Um, yeah, it, it's all those things. Um, I, I relate to a strong sense of the physical. You mm -hmm. know, I build these things up thicker than they end up being, but I I build basically painting on top of painting and then peel away to parts of previous paintings and then build back up again. And, uh, you know, it's, it's all about the materials and the process and, and the feel of it, like you said, and, and a tactileness. And, you know, I want the cloth to, to be something that cloth can be and plaster to be something that plaster can be. Um, rather than using it to represent something else, let it be itself, like the old saying of truth to materials mm -hmm. is, is sort of at the core of what I'm interested in. And the name has something to do with it too, because 38th Street is when I began to work with plaster, but I had to take everything apart that I had done before to get to this point where I could be more direct with the materials. You know, mm -hmm. I had to kind of, deconstruct some of my training to take the next step. But yeah, I was just looking at it. It's on, it's on what, like quarter inch masonite or something like that? Yes, or? that's right. Yeah. 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 Sometimes I use it because sometimes they get carved and yeah. I have an old boat scraper and sometimes I, I make marks with the scraper and so I need something sturdy to yeah. You know, yeah. get that physicalness now that you say that you know i can i can see i mean i saw this when, when i when i when i was just talking about it, but that sense of, of texture and surface mm -hmm. and, and material uh, you can really see it uh, i'm sure this is a piece that um um in some ways to be able to see it uh in person would be in yeah, group. my my stuff doesn't photograph well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it's so uh, whenever you're sort of dealing with a, a lighter kind of form, but but I do think that the um, uh, I mean I I pointed this out a bit, particularly on the top part, but I I do think that when you look at a lot of the lighter areas in the painting. Uh, and I've talked about this in some of the other ones. The thing that's that's that that's nice about the painting is that I think the photograph comes across in terms of really feeling the sen subtle sensations between mm -hmm. uh, a lot of these uh, lighter uh, forms. Now you get to the darker ones, you clearly feel uh, those sensations. But I made the point up here of just moving across this mm -hmm. but even down yeah. here it's not it's not as if it's like titanium white uh out sure. of the tube. i mean you feel yeah. as though there's something thoughtful about the um about the color and um and, and that comes across i just think it's a painting where probably the uh, the, the 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 kind of resonance of the color would 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 be much more felt in uh, person mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Yeah, it's, I, I think for me, I, I had to um, eliminate different things. You know, I, I constantly add and eliminate all the time. And, uh, you know, the, the end result hopefully is a sense of surface mm -hmm. expanse. Yeah. More than like depth or illusions of distance and things. I, I found myself more and more drawn to things like old billboards where there were layers and layers of paper on them peeled away by weather. And I, I over the years, I kept noticing those and how they have a sense of flatness to them. And yet composition wise, they were always very strong. And yeah. so that's sort of one of the sources of, of you know, what I'm looking for is that that kind of sense of flat surface, you know, yeah, minimum, think, you know, physical depth. No, I think that uh, that comes across. Um, I think I, I was, this may be sort of off of your, the track and something, but I know this might even sound like an odd thing to say, but in some ways they, they almost remind me a little bit of the kind of quality that I sometimes uh, find in a Mirandi painting. I don't know. If yes. You know. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I, I went through a phase and uh, Micah. <laughs> oh, is that right? <laughs> okay. This work. <laughs> good. Good. No, I think it's there. I think that, that what I was talking about, um, you have what one might look at and say there's white there, but when you really stop and, and look at them, it's, uh, I think you see that similar kind of, uh, uh, concern in a in a Mirandi painting, you know, just the mm -hmm. subtle mm -hmm. uh, shifts yes. in, um, in, yes. in temperature and whatnot. But no, I think it really we should feel very good about this. Uh, this. Uh, thank you, thank painting. you. Well, thank you for choosing me. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, um, so I think I think everybody can. Um, I hope you visited the website and seen all the work that that was selected for this exhibition. It really is extraordinary. If you do get the chance to get to Circle Gallery I, or to Annapolis, I hope you come in. We'll see if we can't video the show. Um, we've talked about it. And like I said, we're just, we, we very much want people to see the quality of the work. And so we don't want to put out a, essentially a bad video, but, um, but I do realize that seeing the work in place is extremely important. Um, Mark, I want to thank you very much for sharing your expertise with us and selecting to shed this show. And to the artists, thank you so much for sharing your art with us. Um, we operate on the basis at MFA that the art doesn't do anybody any good at the artist's basement. So we really want to get it out. We want people to see it. We want people to enjoy it. This, I think, as you can tell, is a really instructive show. And that's why I talked about a little bit in the beginning. And I think Mark really hit on that, that, that you all are artists. You're, you know your medium, you know what you're doing, you know what other people do, but people walk in, in here off the street and for them to be able to see a show where painting is, is interpreted in so many different ways is instructive to the public. It expands their idea of what art is and what art can be. And I think that's, that's really important to us here at MFA. So with that, I want to thank you for your participation tonight. Um, I do try to keep these to an hour so that everybody can, can get back to their Congratulations, David. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bruno. Um, Congrats, but, uh, Jeff Parcell. Thanks so, much for, thank, okay. thanks so much for joining us. And um, we do have a Will Talk coming up on Tuesday. It's with a couple um, of artists that are married, Emil and Angela Patrizio. He's a photographer who highly manipulates the work and she is an assemblage artist. So uh, I encourage you to, to join us for that. And thank you all for being here this evening and have a great Sunday night. Thank you. Thank you. Way to go, David, way to go. Good job, Mark. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.